Let's look at some lessons learned from a recent compromise of a GitHub account. Hey Stan, talk to us about uh, the story where there is a Microsoft's private GitHub which was uh, exposed and folks got access to some sensitive information there. That's intriguing to think about, you know, private GitHubs being attacked here. Yeah, uh, so this story actually caught my attention. I, I read it in about three different blogs. Um, and the, like you said, Bindu, the, the headline caught my attention. Microsoft's private GitHub repo has been exposed by a hacker or something like that. Um, so um, once I started reading deeper into it, I kind of saw um, that it wasn't a, a, as bad as, as kind of some of the headlines made it seem. Uh, so what actually happened is uh, one specific, you know, Microsoft employee uh, who had a GitHub account uh, somehow had it compromised. Um, and within that GitHub account of that employee, uh, there was uh, about 500 gigabytes worth of source code files or different, uh, you know, information that the hacker was able to download. Um, and what's interesting about the story is basically the hacker had reached out to these different, um, you know, blog outlets um, and, and mentioned this to them and said, hey, I have the story. Uh, and while he was doing that, while he or she was doing that, they, they basically said, uh, I was going to sell this 500 gigabytes of data but then I just decided to release it. So they released about a gigabyte of it. Different security um, researchers kind of took a look at it. Um, and what they were able to ascertain is that it probably wasn't a lot of Microsoft proprietary information in there. What it seemed to be is, you know, like this one employee's account where maybe they were collaborating on different open source projects out there. And uh, basically, uh, you know, had some kind of data there and uh, things like that, but it didn't seem to be like it was you know, related to Microsoft in, in particular. But as I was reading the story, a couple of things jumped out at me, which I think you'll find interesting as well. From the different blogs I was reading ab about it, uh, it seemed like employees from Microsoft were commenting on this issue uh, with some employees, you know, saying on Twitter that that leak was fake or false, while other employees were verifying it, and then some employees were going off the record, talking to these different, uh, uh, you know, news outlets and, and kind of giving them the background scoop, uh, which was intriguing to me because it's basically uh, it, there was this opportunity to create kind of uh, you know, potential for misinformation. Mm -hmm. I know like um, security teams in general, um, they kind of uh, have to investigate these claims uh, often. And sometimes it could be a little bit um, maybe troublesome if different employees are, are kind of putting um, a story out there that may or may not be true or they may or may not have all of the information. Um, so I thought from a PR perspective, it was kind of interesting how uh, you know, the situation was approached, how different people at different times, uh, you know, kind of commented publicly about this before it was even verified by Microsoft. You know, ultimately they did verify that there was this one employee and their GitHub account, you know, did seem to be compromised. Of course, um, they, you know, locked down the access. Uh, so a very interesting story. It made me think of other things, uh, uh, you know, yeah. as, it, as it has to do with GitHub. Um, so for example, like, what should a company do uh, if one of their employees' GitHub repo is compromised? And I just kind of started writing down a little checklist of things that you know I could think of. Uh, and one of them was you definitely want to, you know, regardless of it's um, accurate, the reporting out there or not, you definitely want to take this kind of claim seriously. You do want to investigate them. And I think one of the things you definitely want to investigate is what is in that repo? I mean, source code obviously can be uh, intellectual pro uh, mm -hmm. property, but once it's out, it's out. Well, the things you do want to uh, be aware of is are there any sensitive um, configurations inside of the repo? Uh, so is there anything uh, that has to do with how your you know, private infrastructure is set up yes, yes. that would give somebody access uh, to your internal systems. Are there any API keys that are hard-coded hard that you thought were private that probably shouldn't have been in the versioning system? Um, and anything like any passwords that are hard-coded and things like that. 
And then finally, you know, as you think about securing your employees' um, GitHub accounts, um, you know, there are two-factor authentication options. So you should probably consider if your company has uh, a policy about how, uh, what kind of authentication um, you require uh, for this, you know, for the information uh, that's uploaded there. Do you want people to have uh, to, you know, they must use two-factor authentication in order to upload files to GitHub, uh, or is a password enough? And if a password is enough, you know, what's the policy on that? How do you audit that? Uh, what kinds of things that you're thinking? And of course, just like in this story, I think for me personally, you know, besides this uh, potential, you know, it, it had a, a negative probably uh, connotation for Microsoft, like potentially, you know, there's some sort of source code might have been released, uh, but ultimately, uh, you know, it was just this one employee. So from a PR perspective, you know, how do you handle these kinds of things uh, for your company uh, to make sure that you, uh, you know, you explain exactly what happened, you're super transparent, uh, at the same time, you don't let, you know, misinformation uh, get, yeah. uh, kind of go, uh, you know, go and start spreading uh, about what, yeah. what, what the real facts are. Yeah, and you make a great point there because what we see as part of consulting across our customer base is whether you're large or small, Breach response involves communication, right? And it is very important that you hone that down before a crisis occurs. And whether it is a perceived breach or really it happened, reputational damage is definitely going to, you know, happen to you whether you're large or small. The headline itself is catchy, so you, you know, sort of are intrigued by, wow, this happened to Microsoft. And from what we know, it is one employee, right? It also begs the question in terms of security awareness across employees about what type of access you know they have as well as what type of security policies are in place today to prevent something like this from happening large scale today it's one employee but we don't know about others using it right and then depends on what type of information you put out there same thing applies to public clouds right we see a lot of organizations getting into public cloud we see developers you know starting to stand up instances it again goes back to that one breach one exposure of data you may not consider it, you know, your IP, you may not consider that information to be valuable, but for a malicious actor, that could be, right? And what can you do with that information? So I think, you know, the title of this article, plus, you know, your commentary is very helpful because we do see that across customers, you know, in different verticals as well as sizes. The article is interesting. There's an interesting part of it. And I think being able to have a good PR and have somebody to come to the front of the company and explain the breach is a whole job on its own. Like to be able to explain something to the public in a way where you're not giving away too much info, but at the same time you're giving them enough to say, hey, look, it's under control or it's not. They did mention that this, this breach did not have any information from any major Microsoft project, um, which could mean that, yeah, maybe there are some independent teams working on some minor projects that are not very front facing to the company, maybe for internal use. Um, so what I think goes back to what you said, Stan, like you, you have to be careful what's being put out there because even if it's not explicit to something that brings money into the company or may release personal information, there may be some keys that, that these uh, hackers or bad actors can take out of that data. Like, for instance, they can probably, if, there's a, if they're trying to reach a server through one of these, you know, one of these, they're making a call to a server through one of these non-major applications, maybe they can use that server name and try to say, okay, we can kind of figure out how their naming convention works. Uh, maybe we can hold on to this for a while and search GitHub for anything similar to that and kind of branch out from there, right? Um, so I think even though nothing major was revealed, it is a big deal. It is something that Microsoft should look at. It's a big company. I mean, it's like at and it's huge. It's hard to control everybody. People are gonna dump data into repos, you know, it's just easy. Um, but uh, I do think this story has a lot of meat in it that that the, the PR put a good enough spin on it to say it's okay, nothing major was released, but I still think there's concern and they really should take a deep look into it and um, address everything, including what you said, rolling the credentials for any, any credits that were left in there, they should reset and do all the basic housekeeping. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting, uh, tough to control type of situation. Yes, definitely I think it's important. The one takeaway for me from the story is about, I guess, the PR and making sure 
your employees get the type of training necessary to know who to refer requests for information uh, that come from abroad or from news outlets and things like that. So you do have one part of the company, you know, explaining the facts of the situation rather than different employees kind of offering their ideas as oh, to yeah. what might have happened. Because that could be, that, that could present a challenge later. And, you know, with, with serious breaches uh, and things like that, there are also notification requirements. So if different people say different things that are inaccurate, it could actually be a liability for the company as well. Um, so definitely, I, I don't know, for some reason, that was like the one thing that jumped out at me more. Usually I'm yeah. like, hey, what was in the data dump or what was in there? But for some reason, the fact that so many of the blogs mentioned employees who talked to them, you know, off the record, on the record, on Twitter, it just made me think, wow, that sounds a little bit unmanageable. And um, it definitely one of the key areas probably for uh, the company uh, or all companies really uh, to consider. Yeah, and that's yeah. a great takeaway, right? Uh, you know, given the crisis mode that we are in right now, it's a good timing for all of us to check our incident response plans and really think about the communication process, especially given the timing of, you know, cybercrime and how rampant it is now. You're going to see more and more of this, right? So as an employee who is working remotely, when you see information like this, do you comment on it? You know, typically you don't comment on it. There should be one single source of authority that is communicating all with all external communications even internally should you be really talking about this event uh, or an incident you know to the point where there is going to be a spread of misinformation so i think communication processes should be reviewed as with respect to the incident response plan that you have in place currently and really think about it in times of crisis in times of you know sort of remote working as a distributed workforce how would that plan work out in terms of communications yep. yeah you need good protocol yeah in the beginning